Hi everybody, I'm going to do a uh, problem that I put on Twitter over the summer, but the wording was ambiguous and uh, I've gotten uh, some questions about it from students and teachers. So rather than try to clarify that question, I'm going to do a similar question which is less ambiguous and employs the same uh, strategies of um, combinations and the multiplication principle and cases. This uh, problem uh, is difficult for the SAT, but once you learn the methods in this problem, uh, you can apply it to many other kinds of questions that would be on the test. Here's the question, how many um, five-digit positive integers How many five-digit positive integers, I'm abbreviating, have a group of three re uh, identical digits? And a uh, different group of two identical digits now there's always confusion about order when you're doing uh, card problems or coin problems or any counting problem uh, I like to work with five-digit or four-digit or three-digit integer problems because there's never any confusion about order. Um, three, three, two is not the same number as three, two, three. So here are some examples of uh, the kinds of numbers we want you to count. We could have three fives in any order, let's say. Let's put the fives here and here. And then uh, the other two digits would also be identical, but different. Again, a group of three identical digits, zero, 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 and then a group of two identical digits. And as you see, the uh, the identical digits do not have to be consecutive or adjacent to each other. All right, so let's um, approach this the way I've suggested with other counting problems, and that is uh, make a list like this. If the SAT question gives you examples, use those examples. If they don't give you examples, then the reading uh, part of the question is the most critical, and you're going to have to trust your instincts and go with it. So here are a couple of examples. Um, one of the issues that comes up with digit problems is zero. It's, it's very problematic uh, because you can't have zero as the leading digit. It wouldn't be a five-digit integer. Uh, so one way of dealing with zero is to make it a separate case. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to deal with uh, non-zero digits and solve the problem. And then as a separate case, we'll deal with having a zero as uh, one of the repeated uh, digits. So let's begin. So let's actually consider a number like this. So you have a group of three and <clears throat> the group of three could be any one of uh, nine possible digits because we're excluding zero. In advanced classes, we would write this, which is just nine. Number of ways of selecting or number of combinations of uh, selecting one object from a group of nine. So we have nine choices for 
the digit that occurs three times. And now we have to consider where to place uh, that group of three. Now you could do this simply by listing all the possible positions, or you can do it by analyzing the uh, possible positions. And uh, here we're looking at five locations, and the group of three could occupy any three of those five. So we would write 5C3, which you can compute to be 10. In other words, uh, I'm actually going to list these now. If the positions are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then the three identical di uh, digits could be in positions uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 5, 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 5, 2, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. If you have two to three minutes left and uh, you are not familiar with combinations, then it is doable, although not easy, and it is time consuming. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there is your 10. So we have 10 ways of placing the group of 3. Once we've selected one of those placements, for example, the way you see it here, then the remaining group of two identical digits has uh, no option. It has to occupy whatever slots are left. Now, how many choices do we have for the remaining digits? Uh, well, we, we're not using zero, and we can't use the one that we have in the group of three, so there are eight possibilities uh, remaining. So we have um, choose one from a group of eight, which of course is just eight. Now, we multiply all of this together, and that again is a sophisticated, sophisticated understanding of the multiplication principle, but what we're doing is something like this. We have nine ways to select the digit that's repeated in groups of three, in a group of three. We have ten ways to place that digit. So for each of the nine digits we could choose, like five, we have ten ways to place that digit, for example, positions one, four, and five. And then we have eight choices for the remaining group of two digits. So for each of these nine, there are ten. For each of these ninety, nine times ten, you have eight ways. And that's how the multiplication principle works. Look at my other videos on the multiplication principle if you would like more clarification, uh, simpler problems than this one. So the answer appears to be 720, but remember we ignored zero, and I'm running out of time here. We're almost up to the nine minute mark, and I'm not sure if YouTube is allowing uh, uh, more than 10 minutes these days. I think they are, so I'm gonna continue. Uh, let's now consider the uh, zero case, and there are two possibilities here. Uh, the zero could be the group of three. For example, it could be here, here, and here. It could be here, here, and here. I could do this by combinations. It could be, uh, where else? Here, 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 <laughs> and finally, these three positions. Uh, another way of doing that, as I suggested, is we can't put zero in the first slot, so from the remaining four slots or places, we have to choose three of them, and once you learn combinations, you can do that simply from the definition of combinations or from your calculator. 
All right, so in this case, we have four ways to choose um, to place the zeros. And of course, we only have one option here. We are considering the zero case. So if we have three zeros, there will be four ways to place them. And what about the remaining two positions? Well, we know they're going to be identical digits other than zero. So there are nine possibilities for the remaining two places. For example, it could be 8-8 eight, eight, and so on. We don't have to worry about uh, the different ways of placing those digits because there are only two slots remaining. So there's only one way to select that. But we do have to consider that there are eight ways to choose that. Uh, or I should say, um, did I say um, not eight? That's wrong. Um, there are nine choices for the non-zero digit. So get that one through nine. <laughs> I saw the eight and I'm thinking there are only eight possible, possible digits. Uh, clear thinking, right? So there are nine choices there for the other non-zero digit. And for the zeros, we have four ways to place them. So that's 36 more. Finally, we have to consider the zero uh, being uh, the one that repeats twice. So what do we do in this case? We could have zero here and here group of two now. We could have zero here and here, here and here. And it turns out that there are six placements for the two zeros. This is easy to list. Again, positions two, three, two, four, two, five, three, four, and so on. But you'll see the power of using combinations. It's a real time saver for these questions. And you learn that in Algebra 2 or the courses that follow Algebra 2. And if you uh, don't get to spend much time on that topic, it's worth reading about and learning on your own or look for it on YouTube. Um, so here we have six ways to place the two zeros. Now what about the group of three? Again, we only have one way uh, to place them. It's the remaining three places. And we have nine choices of that digit. For example, it could be four, four, four. Can't be zero. So that's 54. So there is the final result. Add those up and we get 810 as our final answer, the number of um, five-digit positive integers which have a group of three uh, identical digits and another group of two identical digits. If you disagree or you see a faster way or you have any comments to make on this question, please comment on my, uh, you know, under this video or in my YouTube channel, Math Notations Vids. Uh, I invite you to comment on my Facebook page, uh, D. Moraine, Facebook slash D. Moraine, Facebook.com. D. Moraine is what I use for all of my social networking. Twitter is also D. Moraine, Twitter.com slash D. Moraine. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to leave it at that at the 14 minute mark plus, and I'm hoping. YouTube accepts this. If not, then I guess I can't do it. Thank you very much.